Utopia with Kia Nube on Trans Africa Radio. Blues. Her name is Gilly Apta. She is a comedy writer. She's a comedian. She's, you know, all around very beautiful woman uh, who's oh, doing nice. the most in this world of comedy and TV and all of those things. So welcome to Utopia. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's been, yeah, I think, have we been trying to get you for a while? Mm. I think we have. Yeah, well, here I am. <laughs> she is here <laughs> helping us chase away those Monday blues. So, Gilly, um, your comedy career, you basically you're born and raised in Joburg as a comic writer and director. I uh, went to film school. Yes. Yes. Still and waiting for that. I saw your post uh, <laughs> that it takes 20 years to make a living out of your degree. Uh-huh. Still waiting. you still waiting. Still waiting. Yeah. <laughs> when did you leave film school? Uh, 2004 was my last year. But you still got seven years. Oh, good. I'm yeah. <laughs> so relieved. I can kick back, relax. You and got just, seven uh, years to, to make to it make a profit. It. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad you're counting. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you go from being from film school to getting into, co- into comedy? Well, I'm a, I've always been interested in comedy. So as a writer... Um, and a filmmaker even in film school I only made comedies mm-hmm. so um, I, I think I tried to write dramas but then they came out funny and uh, yeah I'm, apparently I'm just I think I'm just not good at writing drama that's how I ended up in comedy but no I've always loved comedy even as a child as a mm-hmm. teenager like that's been my obsession yeah. in life and um, and I've written for comedians and written on sitcoms and I think I've always wanted to do stand-up but I kind of never had the guts to do it Mm -hmm. It took me a long time and a lot of encouragement from a lot of people that I know in the industry who are like mentors to me who eventually pushed me over the edge and onto the stage and when was your first show Um, my first show in fact it's almost two years since my first show it was in September of 2015 was it was it fun was it nerve-wracking what what was Um, it it was so terrifying that it was like I had an out of body experience <laughs> <laughs> but other than that it was fun so no. you saw yourself doing everything it was like you know what I was so new I was so like scared mm-hmm. that when I got on stage all I, all I remember is like the I remember like the f- bright light in my eyes mm-hmm. and the sound of my voice on the speakers uh-huh. and it was like I, I, I honestly, I, I can't even tell you what that experience was like. And then I, I was like, okay, if this is what it's going to feel like every time, this is not sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> it's not sustainable. No. Uh-huh. But um, my goal was to do it. And this is what I say to, to like anyone who wants to try stand up, especially women. We are terrified to get up in front of people. Um, you you want to do it. This was my goal. My goal was to get up and do it just well enough the first time so that I wasn't terrified to try it a second time. Because oh. your first time, to be good on your first time at anything is basically impossible, right? Mm-hmm. You, you're going to be tolerable. Like I was tolerable. I know how to write jokes. You know what I mean? So I knew that it would be okay. But my plan was don't have such a bad experience that you're scared to go up again. Mm-hmm. Because you have to be able to go up another 10 times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Before you can even see if it's, there's some hope for you. Yeah. You know? So, but you did get a couple of laughs. A lot of I laughs. I got a couple of laughs. I did well for a first time. That's what I yeah. would call it. So um, you're happy with that? Yes. Then, uh, then the second time I did it, I completely bombed. <laughs> <laughs> did that not terrify you? Did that not Yes, I had to, to have back? two comedians. I, I sat outside the gig and they like took me off a ledge, basically. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, But you know what happened? The, the next day, I was like, that's it. I'm never doing this again. As, I think it was my third time, maybe. And... Um, uh, another comedian, my friend Tatsun Konzo, was mm-hmm. like, okay, we're going to another gig tonight. Come. And I was like, absolutely not. I do not have it in me to die a second time in one week. <laughs> Forget it. I'll, I'll never survive. And he said to me, you know, you're not going to solve these problems in your head. You're only going to solve it on the stage. Like, get your head out of your butt yeah. and let's go. That's a really good advice. Yeah. Though. And so I did that. And then I managed to get some semblance of dignity back <laughs> and then from then on I could keep going and it didn't affect me so much you know we, it upsets it upsets you when you don't do well but at least when you're a comedian and you're performing all the time mm-hmm. you get another chance to redeem yourself every mm-hmm. night so it's you know talk uh, it off to the game and then writing for other people and then compared that to writing for yourself which do you prefer? Um, look there's nothing quite like the experience of performing a joke to people and having yeah. it land, you know. But but also like it's been a privilege to be able to write for somebody like Nick Rabinovitz, for example. And then, you know, you write something and we write together. It's a very 
sort Natural. of yeah it's become like a process but but to see the thing work because I don't have access to the audience that he has access to that's mm-hmm. thousands of people you know so to be in a theater and be at the back and watch the gag land to a couple of thousand people is great you know mm-hmm. so it's a different thing so you're happy so and it's taught me what I know for myself so okay. that I could write comedy for myself ultimately would you continue writing for other people if say you get to a point where you're just like mm, maybe I should keep this like would you yeah continue? well you know what the thing is it's never like if you look at it's it's never comedy is about the person right okay. so it's it's hardly ever just a joke the joke is related to the person I don't ever write a joke to someone and just send it to them like okay. so Nick and I will work together he will write the material and then we'll sit and work on that material together and develop it so let's say he's writing a joke about it's about his life so I'm not going to write a joke about kids I don't have you yeah. know <laughs> but he's got kids so we write jokes about his kids yeah. you know so it's like it's a different process yeah which makes you grow quite a bit, actually. Yeah, yeah. totally. And um, why did you actually go to film school for starters? What was it about film school that drew you to it? Like, why didn't you just go straight into comedy, per se? I, I love entertainment. I didn't know also at the time, I didn't know you could do... I didn't know you could write comedy for comedians. I didn't know that you could... There's a lot of stuff I wasn't exposed to and didn't know. Like, I guess I was exposed, but in this country, stuff like that wasn't happening back Mm -hmm. then. You know what I mean? At least I I didn't know how to have access to that world yet. But I've always been obsessed with TV, comedy, sketch shows, um, you know, film comedies. So those were the things I wanted to be involved in. You know, Mm -hmm. those... And I I never saw myself as a performer. So it was always uh, something I wanted to be behind the scenes of. Okay. Yeah. When we come back on the Mad Comedy Monday with Gilly Apta, we're going to be finding out a little bit more about her. Who eventually decided, who eventually convinced you to get on that stage? Like, who really said, girl, get your butt up there. You know you can do this. <laughs> There's an answer. <laughs> Plus 27792 is the WhatsApp line. Or hit us up on um, Twitter at Skiangle. And of course, ours, the Trans Africa 872. That easy, that simple. Chasing away the Monday blues right here on Trans Africa. It's called Move on TransAfricaRadio.net. So when Gilly was in the studio, I told her that we only play African music, right? <laughs> I, li- I like this. I either play African music uh, and The Weeknd because The Weeknd's got Ethiopian parents. You really have to reach yes. for things when you're only playing African music. How do you, you know what my issue with The Weeknd is? Every yeah. time I try to write anything about him, I don't know. How do you spell The Weeknd? Is it W-E-E-K-N-D? Is it W-K-N-D? Is it W-K-E-N-D? Like, you know what I mean? There's a lot. Uh, There's too many, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> Gilly was just like, yes, and The Weeknd. Yeah, because he is of Ethiopian descent and he speaks Amharic as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he gets a pass. <laughs> good, good. He gets a pass. Good. So, uh, Gilly, who eventually persuaded you, convinced you to go on to stage take your stuff from writing to whatever and put it I on had stage. um so so I I've been working for Nick with Nick Rabinovitz for a long time he'd been trying to convince me for a long time mm-hmm. um and Nick is one of those people who will encourage you to you know just get past your fears in anything and do the thing that you want I always say to him can you please stop forcing me to make my life better it's really irritating <laughs> and um but one day I went with him to a corporate that we had worked on and I met uh Donovan and Jason Goliath from Goliath and Goliath mm-hmm. and they uh, we it was the first time I had met them and they were like oh so you're a comedy writer blah 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 and then we chatted and they will, they said to me well you know why aren't you doing stand up and I and then Nick gave me this look like you see I told <laughs> I've you telling. yeah I've been telling her and whatever and then um Jason said to me look well you know whenever you are ready we'll give you a spot at the box in Maboneng which is their gig every Sunday night so then I would go Often, like I'd go every week to go watch, and then every time I would leave, Jason would look at me and go, <laughs> like mocking me that I'm chicken every time I came. And then one day I was just like, okay, and I booked a day. Uh-huh. And uh, and what's funny about that day is that uh, they they gave me a slot on the one Sunday, and then I, and then they um, Nicholas who Nicholas Goliath who books mm-hmm. all the acts says to me, I'm sorry, we actually can't have you this week. Come next week, it's our third birthday show. It's Ooh. gonna be huge, and I was like, ah! <laughs> you know, I was like trying to be anonymous with this thing, and then um, what happened was I went to that show and I performed on the on the same night. It was their third birthday, and that night they had Jason Donovan and Nicholas all performed, as well as Eugene Koza, and mm-hmm. I think one other. Um, the beatbox guy I don't remember his name right now but uh, the point is I was like how 
am I going to survive this? You Were know. you the only woman on the, the only on woman? Yeah, Ooh. and and also it's like the only woman among uh, amongst very strong, you Seasoned know, individuals. yes, yes. So, but they gave me that opportunity, and yeah, you held your own ever since. Yeah, I think and so. And now you're here. Yeah, and obviously the life of a comedian isn't always actually always that easy, right? So, as a woman in this world of comedy, that's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Why awkward? What is it about it that's awkward, though? You know what it is. You have to be. You have to get comfortable with being one of the guys, and uh, and I think that's fine. Like I've learned to be like that. We all have in some, you know, in many professions where almost everything is a male-dominated industry. Mm-hmm. But but the comedy industry, yeah, you have to go out. Um, I'm like ten years young, uh, older than everybody else on the scene, so that doesn't help. <laughs> so like I feel like I'm everyone's granny, but <laughs> but. Yeah, you know, you just you have to you have to take the thing with whatever it comes. The thing is, it's kind of tough, but at the same time, it's such a rewarding, so fun, mm-hmm. and such an exciting thing to do that mm-hmm. that it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel hard. Okay, you know, it doesn't feel hard. And um, you also have the camaraderie of other female. I do, sure, as well. and the male comedians. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is it is it quite a close knit community in terms of? comedians being supportive of other comedians or is there quite a bit of like mm, let me hate on her just for the sake of hating on her <laughs> I find it very supportive mm-hmm. some people will tell you otherwise I think but I find it really really supportive I, I don't I didn't expect when I first came into this industry that not only would I be able to do the thing and you know th- th- that was the only thing in my mind I didn't realize that what came with it is like an amazing network and circle of very encouraging mm-hmm. very supporting people who you know, have really, really pushed me and helped me and are always encouraging me and, like, picking me up. And, you know, so it's like, yeah, it's it's actually been a blessing. That's great, though, yeah. to know that you have other people behind you backing you all the time. Yeah, and I feel that way. But have you had some really... Do you have beef with anyone? Uh, I wish I had beef, man. That'd be so cool. <laughs> you can talk about it, write about it. <laughs> it would be great. Uh, I'm not a beefy kind of a person, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> you know what? You know what? I, for me, it's like... It's like, are you supporting me and encouraging me, or are you in my way? And if you're in my way, I don't pay attention. Ah, so you ignore the haters. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't come across many haters. I really don't. It's just love for you. Well, I don't know if it's just love. I also don't pay attention to the other <laughs> stuff. So it's like, there might be hate that I don't know about. I really, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I've got a nemesis I don't know about, plotting my demise. <laughs> if you have beef for Gilly, just come out with it. Yeah, <laughs> just come out. Just tweet me. You know, it'll I have be fine. With you. I'm ready for you. Uh, but how do you block out all of that negative, all that negativity? Because negativity is sometimes something that's very difficult to obviously block out. But how do you do it? Um, I'm a quite a naturally positive person. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I'm, I'm pretty upbeat most of the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I think there's this like picture of comedians as like depressives. Apparently, but apparently, yeah, quite depressed in life. So yeah, I hear. yeah, so, uh, so I hear as well. <laughs> but. Uh, but for the most part, I feel pretty well adjusted. I also think like I came into this career late. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm 35. Like I've had a career. I'm not so sensitive about everything. I've seen, I've, I've failed a lot, you know, like, so I'm not that sensitive about every little thing that happens, Yeah. you know, and the negative negativity is usually like in your own head. It's about like, oh, you know, I'm not doing enough. I'm not working hard enough. I'm not getting enough gigs. I'm not doing the thing. And But, you know, you have like wins and losses all the time. You have to... And you have to just keep going. And talking about wins and losses, um, you worked with Mark Lochtering. Sure. That's a great win that I see. Oh, yeah. That uh, was early, early in my career. I got um, to do this come with Mark. Rick, uh, Nick uh, Rabinovitz as mm, well. Yeah. Uh, who else are you looking to work with in terms of maybe developing you know, a show, we, a comedy show, a TV show, or a movie? I, I want to work with, I think, my fellow female comedians and mm-hmm. do something. You know, it'd be great to make a film, to make... Um, to make a series you know we've just done we just uh, shot a sketch for the comics choice awards mm-hmm. um there's about five or six of us female comedians in the sh- in the sketch and i wrote it and um i was like when we shot it i was like this would be great to just do all the time like this is me in my element mm-hmm. so i think that would be a great thing to do and we're always looking for opportunities like that i think eventually it'll come together it must come together yes. though, because i can see quite a number there's you there's uh, Tracy Lee, sure. there's Celeste, there's yeah. Nina Hasty, there's so many. Yes, yes, yes. Lisa Lindsay, yes. there's Claudine Ullman, yes. 
That would be awesome. Would be I can see that in my head right now. Angel Those, Campy, mm-hmm. Lindy Johnson. I can keep going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kate Pinchuk, yeah. Kate Tony and comedians. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be great, amazing. Though. Yeah, that's great. Though bringing an, a light to actually what you guys are doing in terms of what you guys are doing for the world of female comedians right here in South Africa. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And how was it working with Mark? What did you learn from Mark? Um, you know, it was quite a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned. I, I learned the difference, you know, you work on a sitcom and you work on stand-up, now I work on my own stand-up, and you learn the difference between writing for all those different mediums. And also um, writing for a character. So writing for Mark was like, from what I can remember, was interesting because he had to play himself, but like a heightened version of himself on the show. You know, so you have to write things that the person feels like it's believable for them to say and do. So that's why you get to know people really well mm-hmm. and you get to know a character really well. Yeah. You know, and how to write for them. So that was something I learned on that show. So when you come back on My Comedy Monday, we're going to be... She'll be giving us her point of view on some of a couple of things that have been happening this weekend. The money fight. Nonsense fight. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the greatest fight. But when we come back, Gilly After is letting us know about a couple of things that have happened this weekend that made social media just go a little bit crazy. I hope you don't reveal my ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> Zimbabwe and Nigeria coming together on this one. Jab Praiser featuring David was called My Lily. Say it, say it. <laughs> I just think these ly- like a lot of these lyrics of these songs sounds like a ten year old wrote a wrote a poem for his girlfriend. <laughs> you shine like a light from the sun, girl. Come, guys, let's develop these lyrics. <laughs> let's 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 be a little more sophisticated. Maybe that's not the point. And they put a melody to it. Yeah. And that's it. Made a yeah. video. Now it's got I mean it's got quite a number of views actually on, I'm sure. on, on YouTube. I'm sure. So this past weekend was a big money fight with uh Floyd Floyd Mayweather He calls himself something In the, in the middle there I heard I heard there was a big fight Did those uh, gentlemen Resolve the issues? I highly doubt it <laughs> <laughs> I highly doubt it Because Conor McGregor says No The referee should have Just let it chill You know Because the ref stopped it Right he was, he was gonna get Beat down If the ref didn't stop If he didn't stop the fight He's like No the referee should have Just let me continue Because I was just A little bit fatigued But I'm just like Really no, come no, on. No, guy. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just, just take it. And they got quite a bit of cash in the change, the cash in the bank account as well for that one. They both did, right? Yeah. Surely. Conor McGregor was looking at about seventy-five million okay. US dollars. I wasn't paying attention. Who won? Um, Mayweather. <laughs> okay, yes. Good to know. And he said he's retired now. We'll see until the next big one. Nice. Comes you see, the thing is, like, I don't know about sports, but I, the only reason I, I don't, there's only one reason I, like, I don't know anything about sports. It's because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Not even if you could get, like, a good amount of change from it. Oh, if I could, sure. Yeah. I'd care a lot. <laughs> but not really I'd care a lot If I if it was paying uh-huh. you know, If it paid to get I don't understand I'll tell you something I don't understand Like why Why are sports So important In this sense right When we listen to the news Every hour On the hour We mm-hmm. hear everything That's happening In current affairs We hear about um, Currency And then we hear About sports why do we hear about sports every hour? I get that sports are important for like, you know, on a national level and mm-hmm. like in people's lives. But why are sports so important that we have to hear about them literally every hour? I've never understood why we need an hourly update in our <laughs> lives. I, 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 it blows my mind. I'm like, this is the biggest place of airtime I've ever heard. <laughs> I, I just, I'll never get it. I want somebody to explain it to me. <laughs> um, I don't know. As a sports, I like, I don't know, actually. Like, like even be a fan, you know, but every fan, hour? But yeah. Why every hour, though? Hmm. What Something the, could happen. Like what? To like, affect us on a, on a grand scale where we need to know every hour. Think about it. It makes no sense. It actually kind of doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. But yeah, that actually kind of makes a lot of sense. No. Yeah, you're right. I can't win that battle. <laughs> yeah, no. I can't really no, win that I'm, battle. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for someone to answer. That would be great if somebody could tell us. <laughs> so if you do have an answer to that one, that would be great. Let us know as to why we need to know as to what's happening in sports on the hour, every hour. Every day. Every day. Of our lives. Forever. And then there's a show, three hour show about it. Uh, that look that that's fine okay that's something that you can just choose to tune into or not tune into you know mm-hmm. but like the hourly updates guys let's talk about this come 
<laughs> it's not needed. No, I don't think it's needed. Um, something that's not needed in someone's life is is. I don't know how to put this. <laughs> I feel like you should just say it. Just speak your mind. You know how someone says, "No, it's not my fault because certain things were written this way about my mm-hmm. life." <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, they eventually came out to say that no, I decided to take off my book from uh, to take my book off shelves because I decided to keep these people quiet. Right. Yeah. Right. So how is it that you don't take blame for getting your own birthday wrong? <laughs> I mean, you know, I think like you have to you have to put yourself in the shoes of the person. <laughs> and the shoes are high and uncomfortable. <laughs> so maybe said person was not focused I, I, I've got no answer I'm just rambling here I'm rambling I, I, my, you know my thing is like how do you get so far how does the thing get so far uh-huh. and then there's nobody was paying Quality attention check. like don't you give your book to your mom to read and then your mom's like no my girl you weren't born in that day like let's just <laughs> like you know like give it to a, to a close family member to proofread yeah even Facebook will tell you no that's not your birthday girl no nah, girl like <laughs> just make sure you go back properly and look at it yeah I mean there's lots of they, 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 in fact it's too easy the jokes that can be made A I, to B the distant, I don't know <laughs> and now um, she named someone in a book and they're taking her to court to remove their name from the book oh really it's yeah. like nobody checked her eh? it's like it's like it was just a tweet. <laughs> it's like the book was like a Trump tweet, you know? Nobody, no one checked. It's just like, she just typed it up like a tweet, just printed it and sent it. And like, <gasps> hey, no one checked. Literally no one checked. To be fair, to be fair, if no one checked, actually she did well. Because, uh, I, I don't know. I, even me, I read my, do you know how often I read a tweet before I, before I post? A lot, like a lot. <laughs> And Grammar. that's only how many characters? 140. 100, only 140 characters. I check them. <laughs> I check them. You know when you send an email? You know when you're sending an email to somebody, like an angry email? Uh-huh. You send it to a friend to check. You know what I mean? You're like, Did tell me if you think it sounds too harsh. And then they come back and not, they don't care about like anything. They tell you like, you know, you spelt um, this thing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, they don't even tell you the thing. They don't give you feedback. They're like, actually, your grammar isn't great in the sentence. Like... Just send it to somebody. That's all I'm saying. So basically, that said person's book was just a tweet. It's a long, it's a very long tweet. Just. Yeah, that's what I think. It's like the longest tweet ever. <laughs> <laughs> so Gilly Apta is here with us on a Mad Comedy Monday, helping us chase away those Monday blues. She gave us, you know, a little, little bit of what she thought about this money fight. And of course, certain people getting their books removed from shelves as well. <laughs> And I think let's talk a little politics. What do you want to talk about? Um, how the DA wants to launch as a petition calling for early emergency elections. So they vote of no confidence. They're trying hard. They're going they so hard. Yeah, so, so hard. Oh. And then they said, no, parliament must dissolve now. Dissolve. Yeah, that didn't work out. No. And then now they launch a petition calling for early emergency elections. When are the elections? Uh, the actual, 2019. The non-emergency elections. Yeah, 2019. Yeah, somewhere there in 2019. So it's a year and a half, actually. So they want to launch early elections. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know how that's going to go, hey? Yeah, because they're losing. I was going to say, they want to lose early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they want to lose it's early. It's like when you, you, you know, when you want to like... When you're in a relationship and you want to like... You think the person is going to break up with you. You just want to know now. Yeah. You know, like, don't break up with me in a year and a half. Oh, I need to know now. Yeah. That's what they want. That's basically what they want. <laughs> they want to feel the pain trying. now. Yeah. <laughs> but don't you think they the couple that's just been together for way too long? Yes, absolutely. Actually. Absolutely, you're right. Like, I love you, but I hate you at the same time. I know. I, it's, it's not even, it's like siblings. Even they have, to, they have to love each other. They it's don't not even really love hate you. No. So no. I don't even know what it is. It's just one of those very interesting relationships. Yeah, I feel like... You know, the DA to the ANC feels like it's that irritating little brother that you have to take everywhere with you. It doesn't have a lot of power over you, you uh-huh. know? But it's like the kid that your mom always makes you take with you wherever you go. You know, if you want to go, no, you have to take your kid brother mm. with you. That's, the, that's how it feels. Forever. He's with you for life. There's nothing you can do about it. You know? 
<laughs> Did he ever go through that? Were not you? really, not really. I've got a little brother, but I wasn't. I didn't have to take him anyway. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> did you, Did you ever party with him? No, not really. We're a little too far apart in age. Is it? But I did dress him up uh, like in girls' clothes when he was Ooh. little. So, yeah, he didn't really have much of a choice. He was like, I was like, whatever this, whatever gender this baby comes out, it's gonna be my little doll. <laughs> <laughs> so, it doesn't really, you know, he didn't really have much of a choice. <laughs> Shame. Just what was one of the outfits that you dressed him up in, if you remember? Yeah, I used to dress him up in like a little girl bikini. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess that's the only kind of bikini there is. But a yellow polka dotted one. No, no, no. I, I wasn't that melodramatic. I mean, I wasn't that flamboyant. Yeah. But do you ever remind you of any pictures of them? I do. I do. I don't. I don't know where they are, but I could find them at my parents' house. I'm uh-huh. sure. Show mm. him like, hey, remember those days? Yeah, like this has made you the man you are today. <laughs> <laughs> remember the struggles of your early life. <laughs> Dressing up in a bikini. Yes. <laughs> When people tell you you had it easy, say no. These were my struggles. <laughs> in a bikini. <laughs> yeah, in a bikini. <laughs> and you know, there's not just elections happening, calling for early elections here in South Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, Kenya went through elections as well. Yeah. Um, Angola, just past week, also went through elections. Right. And you know how African leaders are in life. Um, they'll <laughs> as much as I love them, they always claim an early victory. And you don't know how they claim this early victory. And the right. opposition is just always like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Fraudulent things here have happened. I, I feel like there's never been an election in Africa where somebody hasn't gone fraudulent. Fraudulent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you think that can change, though? How, how can we... Oh, what is it that you'd like to say to these African leaders that have been in power since Independence Day and are just like, no? Like, go on a holiday. <laughs> a long one. Don't you want to go on a holiday? Are you enjoying this? Is it fun? It doesn't seem like fun. You know what I mean? Ruining people. It doesn't feel like fun. For 40 odd something years. It's, uh, I feel like, don't you want a break? Aren't you bored? Aren't you bored? You know, we get bored of anything. Aren't you bored of power? Apparently not. People don't get bored of power. Eh? Power changes you. Yeah. But like, don't you like, don't you want to try a new career or something? I always wonder how no one manages to like snipe them. <laughs> That's a... S- do you know what I mean? Like they do it to like the most like powerful, famous presidents in history, but they can't get these guys. Like how, how has this happened? I don't really understand it. I never understand it. Like how, is, how have you survived this long? That's what I want to know. Nothing gets these guys. Nothing. Nothing. Not a sniper, not a, a terminal illness. Nothing gets them. They're like indestructible. They're traveling to Singapore and Spain for these terminal illnesses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even they're on the way to that thing. Nobody managed to just pop, pop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think... <laughs> I don't get it. I, I like... Surely, by now. <laughs> there should have been a plan somewhere, somehow. There should have been a plan, that's what I'm saying. But maybe that's a bit... Uh, Dramatic. It's a, for, you know, for sort of um, a Monday afternoon. But I, but I just think, like, how did... How? How does it happen? I don't understand. How does it allow it to happen for so long with one person? If you moment? if you were a president yeah. of a country, yeah. what would what would be your most important law? To stay in power for as long as possible. <laughs> <laughs> um so Mr. Easy, he uh, is Apple Music's top artist to watch for twenty seventeen. You know when you choose your name as a rapper, but Mr. you don't know you're gonna get big. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Easy. You gotta think this through. Yeah. And you, when you choose that name, you gotta think to yourself, I'm gonna be huge one day. Uh huh. And then I'm gonna be on. What did you? What were you gonna say? He was somewhere. Um, the Late Late Show with James. Is it James Corden? Then you get onto the Late Late Show with James Corden, and your yeah. name's Mr. Easy. You sound like a cartoon character. <laughs> you sound like they could name a cereal after you. I feel like a cereal. Yeah, like Mr. Easy Pops. Well, like Easy Pops. <laughs> Now that you've given him an idea, uh, it's pretty good. It's <laughs> actually pretty good. Ninja cereal. Yeah. Ooh, it's gonna taste like Jello. That thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna taste like Jello. <laughs> what would your rap name be if you decide to, you know, once in a lifetime have a rap life? Gillo G. 
Hey, girl. <laughs> hey. No, you know why? Because my Twitter handle is Gillog, uh-huh. right? G I L L O G. Uh huh. The reason it's Gillog, actually, I just realized this is all connected, and I didn't realize. Is my best friend when I was younger used to call me Gillog, like Kellogg's. Yeah. Like Gillog's cornflakes, right? Uh-huh. So you have a cereal now. You see, <laughs> you have a I cereal. just talk myself into my own cereal. But so it's Gillog. But then when I started doing comedy, the comedians thought that my handle was Gillog G. Hey. So guys were calling me Gil OG And I didn't understand And then I realized That's my handle But it actually was Gilog So I, th- I think that could only be my Gil OG Yeah So you're a G actually I like that I think so Yeah That works out yeah, pretty right. well It works right Yeah it does Yeah Someone who's not working Is Donald Trump No <laughs> <laughs> I never thought you OG know, um, In life You know A country or certain Someone goes through A really very suspect part time of their life and i never thought that america's politics would get worse than george bush right yeah <laughs> but then donald trump came along but then the circus then the circus opened with his orange self yeah yeah and yeah. that thing of his what is that we we didn't believe donald trump existed as a person do you know what i mean like even when he was just a, a rich guy Fired. we were like what this guy's ridiculous that like we didn't believe him as a person in the world now we have to believe him as a president it's hard it's hard it's a lot what's what's the most ridiculous thing donald trump has done for you thus far because obviously there's more to come the most ridiculous are you really putting me on the spot <laughs> tough oh what has he done recently and he's just like no i mean i mean for me personally obviously the thing of like not denouncing nazis is like as a jewish person that just blows my mind it's like it's definitely the most like i want to say the most heinous thing he's managed to do Uh from a pr perspective yeah you know um i don't know that it's like actually the worst thing he's done because we don't know you know we don't know the impacts of presidents until years later actually you don't know but you know they take actions now they sign a piece of paper and then a couple of years later like this I don't is know. what's happening yeah so it's hard to tell it's hard to tell <laughs> we don't know yet and it's him against putin as well and against the north korean prince slash president slash it feels like everything. a spoof it actually really does i'm really yeah. waking up i'm trying to i'm just like Wake me up, wake me up. Yeah, it feels like a, like a feature film <laughs> that you could ne- about world politics that they would never air in North Korea. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh uh, yes. The actual definitely. if they just if the, if if ten years ago they made a movie that was of the current politics now nobody would believe it. That's true though. It's like no, you're lying. But no, it's happening. I don't know. I don't know why the world is being punished. I really don't know. What have we done? What have we done as a human race to deserve this? We have to ask ourselves these questions. I think it's all this weather thing. What's this thing? Maybe because we've polluted the earth. We've polluted the earth, and then Mother Nature was like, "Pa, get Donald Trump." Yes, this is what you get. (laughs) This is what you deserve, Earth, Earthlings. Donald Trump. (laughs) Never in my life would I think that Mother Earth would punish us with Donald Trump. Oh my gosh. Really? Yeah, she's a, you know, she, she's a badass. <laughs> no, that's a bit too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it feels unfair. Like, also, it feels like it's going to make it worse. I don't yes. feel like she's solving the problem. I feel like she's adding to the problem. It's like she's on PMAs, <laughs> like for the whole next five years. <laughs> no. Exactly. No. Exactly. I wonder what will happen. You know, it'll be inter- really, really interesting if he gets reelected. <gasps> Goodness me. Then, then we'll know the truth. Then we'll know the real truth. Because I think people didn't realize. People thought like it was all... Like, uh, you know, uh, like election, mm, election mm, madness. Mm, mm, I don't think they realized that actually it would all the stuff that he said he was, he actually is. And he actually is actually doing it. Yeah, he's, yeah. And then Hillary Clinton is just sitting there. I told you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I totally. told you. This is really painful. Mother Nature, I apologize for whatever I did. To We're you. very sorry for anything we've done. If you could please just um, give us back. Just about anyone. We'll a take anyone. Thinking individual. No, no, I- anyone. McCain. Anyone. Think and about McCain it. McCain Kellogg's. <laughs> Gone too far. Think about it. Anyone. Trans Africa Radio. Made in Africa. I feel like he's the guy to do it. Poses. He is. He really he's got is. a track record. Donald Trump. Yeah, he successfully wrote the song about Donald. Now he can start other prisons. <laughs> We're waiting on you, Paige, to do that. Yeah, we really are. So, thank you so much for coming through, uh, Gilly. Pleasure. You've kept so us fun. highly entertained today. Uh, but 
I have a million dollar question for you before you, you know. Do I get a million dollars if I answer it correctly? Hmm. That can be worked out. Okay, good. I'm that glad. can be worked out. Because, you know, I'm still trying to make my career money. Oh you? Yeah, you know, the 20 Oh, yeah, moment. seven years left. Yeah. Girl, you, you got you sorted. <laughs> you sorted. So here at Trans Africa, we play 100% African music. And we're all about 100% African entertainment as well. Cool. So as a performer, as a comedian, how does, it know, uh, how does it feel to know that you have a platform that's going to be behind you 100% as an African? Uh, this platform? Oh, it feels amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's fantastic, honestly. Uh-huh. It's nice to have... Um, it's like you were saying, we actually are not well-versed in our own continent. No, we're not. Because we're chasing up north. We're not. But look what's happening up there. Sorry, up, up northwest. Okay. <laughs> you know, we look to those influences, but it's all here. Yeah. It's all here. Mm-hmm. I think that's why also like local comedy is so great because yeah. we talk about local things openly mm-hmm. and it's exciting and it's funny and we don't need to look anywhere else for it. Yeah. We don't. Like in comedy, we don't need to look anywhere else for the content. Why are we looking for it anywhere else in any other sphere? When it's already here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like my friend Nina Hasty says, we are the source. I like that. Mm. We are the source. I love that, actually. Yeah. So, what's coming up for you? Any shows that we can come through and watch you out and make us laugh once again? Yes, lots of shows. Um, Monday nights, free comedy in Melville at Poppy's mm-hmm. every Monday night. Um, come through. Tuesday nights, free... No, 50 Rand comedy at, at Kitchener's in Bramfontein. Mm-hmm. Um, there is also Santon Comedy Club at Hard Rock Cafe uh-huh. every Tuesday night. Mm-hmm. Wednesday, Shakers in Maboneng, free mm-hmm. comedy night. I mean, how's this? This is, you're making life easy for Free me. comedy night, Wednesday night, Shakers in Maboneng. Uh-huh. Um, uh, Goliath Comedy Club, Friday yes. night, Saturday night. The Box, also run by the Goliaths on a Sunday night in Maboneng. It's comedy, na- comedy almost every night of the week. So seven days a week, we pretty much... Seven days a week and, and two or three nights of that week, it's free. And you get to see comedians like established comics, trying out new material amongst newcomers, amongst middleweights. So it's really great. That's awesome. Yeah. So my, pretty much my nights are booked up. Yeah, you got no time for anything else. I have no reason to say that I don't have a social life when no, you're you around. Don't. You don't. Come, have a drink, watch a show. You know, um, it's it's great. You, you honestly, you get so much value on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday night. You see comedians that you want to see trying out their new material, um, trying out some old, you know, d- mixing it with old material, but like great, great comics, great acts. Yeah, up and coming, established, and you can't go wrong. And how can we find you on social media? And how can we, you know, book you as well? Um, I am at Gillog, as I said on Twitter, G I L L O G. She's a G. I'm, I'm an OG. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what I was told. I can't take responsibility for this. <laughs> um, I'm on Instagram, Gilly Apta, G I L L I. That's my first name, mm-hmm. surname, A P T E R. And yeah, that's where I am. I'm easy to find. Okay. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, you blast. chased away these Monday blues I'm of ours. Um, I hope people. You've done the same for me. Have I? Yeah. Yay! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. So, you know, a whole lot of feel-good vibes for this Monday afternoon on TransAfricaRadio.net. Uh, that's how you can find on social media. You know, and your calendar is booked up, really. You have no reason to say you have nothing to do at all. Mm-mm. She gave you everything. Mm-mm. So if you need to laugh... Monday, tonight, puppies in Melville. You need, you know where to go now, you there see? There it is. Simple, easy. She's done did it for you, yeah? Great. This, this is Trans Africa Radio.